For this video, we're going to talk about dividing integers. And if you'll remember, our rules have not changed. If our signs are the same, then the answer will always be positive. If the signs are different, then the answer will always be negative. We're just going to apply this now to division. So let's look at this first problem that says negative 24 divided by 3. Well, if we just do the plain old division, 24 divided by 3 is 8. Now we can concentrate on our signs. We have opposite signs here, or different signs, negative and a positive. So according to our rule, the answer will be negative. So our answer is negative 8. Now I want to skip this next one for just a minute because I want to go back down to here, the, to the third example, which is a, a little bit closer to the first one. I want you to notice also that this one doesn't say divide, but a fraction is just a compact way of writing a division problem. So even though it doesn't specifically have the division symbol, when we see negative 24 over negative 12, that literally means negative 24 divided by negative 12, just a compact way of writing it. So here again, let's look at our numbers first. 24 divided by 12 would be 2. And then we can take into consideration our signs. Well, both of these have the same exact sign. So if our signs are the same, the answer is automatically positive. Now remember, just because it's positive, we don't have to necessarily go ahead and write the positive. So we would just say that is 2. Now I'm going to skip down to the fourth one here because these, the second and the fourth examples here can be a little bit tricky and I really want you to understand exactly uh, you know, which one is which. Keep in mind that division is really and truly just a way of, of separating out items. For instance, if you were to have, say, uh, six items, let me just draw out six tick marks here, six items. If I were to uh, put these in groups of two, say, well, I would have this group of two, and then I would have this group of two, and then I would have this group of two. So that would be three groups of two. So six divided by two, we know to be three. Well, that's all division really is. If we take that idea and we apply it to using zero, then it really makes sense. Let's say that we have no items, and we want to group these into groups of 21. Well, you can't get a group of 21 out of zero. It's just not possible. So the answer is automatically zero. Anytime that zero is on top, the answer is automatically zero. Now, the second example, let's go back up to here. This one, the zero is on bottom. So we need to think along the same lines that we did a while ago. Let's say that we have 13 items. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There we go. And let's get groups of 0. Well, here's a group of 0, and here's a group of 0, and here's a group of 0, and here's a group of 0. I could do this all day long and still have 13 tick marks here. We don't have any way of knowing how many times 0 goes into 13. We know we can get groups of 0 out of 13. We just don't know how many times. So in that case, we say that this is undefined. Another way to remember it is you can never divide by 0. It's not allowed. Now let's quickly go through some of these translations here. This one says find the quotient of negative 54 and 9. Well, if you'll remember from your keywords, the word quotient means to divide. And what two things are we dividing? Negative 54 and 9. Now we've turned it into a number problem that we can go ahead and, and just evaluate. So 54 divided by 9 would be 6. And then because the signs are different, the answer would be negative. The last one says, translate each phrase into an expression. Use x to represent a number. I know that was cut off. I apologize for that. But we don't have to solve this one. We just have to translate it. Here again, I see the word quotient, which means to divide. And what are we dividing? Negative 8 and a number. So negative 8 divided by x.